And so this problem is following up on the heels of the work we did yesterday, where we saw the very first thing we want to do is we want to move everything to the same side of the equation. And when we do that, what I'm looking to do is keep my x squared term positive. And I can do that by moving everything to the right side in this particular case. So I would subtract the 8x squared, add the 9x, and subtract the 48 from both sides. When you do that, you should have 0 equals 20x squared plus 16x minus 48. And then we're looking to solve it from there. Now, first thing when solving is, can we use square root principle? No, we can't here, because you'll notice, of course, that we have two x's. Okay, next thing is, we try to factor it. Is this factorable? Well, first thing you want to notice, remember, when trying to factor it, is there something you can divide out of all three numbers? In other words, is there a common monomial that you can factor out at the start? And yes, there is. And so what can I divide 20, 16, and 48 by? Let's see, I can divide them all by 2. Although I can do even better than that, can I? I can divide them by 4. And so I'm going to start by factoring a 4 out of the whole thing. And so that gives me 4 parentheses, because whatever I factor out, I need to keep track of it right out front there. 5x squared plus 4x minus 12. All right. Now, we still don't know if we can solve it by factoring, but we're at least a lot closer now. So I'm now going to look at this quadratic that's left inside and see, can I factor that? And so I would end up doing a times c, and I'd find that equals negative 60 here. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply negative 60 and add to a positive 4. I can actually think of a number pretty quickly on that one because when I see a number ending in 0, the first thing I normally check is trying it by 10. And 6 and 10, I can make a 4 out of that. And so I'm going to go ahead and start down that road here. So I'm going to have 0 equals 4 times. Now the 5x squared is going to stay at 5x squared. I'm going to break my 4x into a positive 10x and a negative 6x. And then I can factor out of the first term, the first two terms and the last two terms. Now, if the 4 hanging out out front is causing you a little bit of confusion, if it's like a little bit too much going on all at the same time, remember you could do this process separately, kind of do it on the side of your paper there to keep track of it, and then you could plug it in at that point. Either way, though, when you've factored out the whole thing, you should have 4 times x plus 2 times 5x minus 6. Once we've gotten to that point, we can now actually solve it. Remember, that was just the work we do in order to solve it. x actually equals what makes the first parenthesis equal 0. Well, that's going to be negative 2. Notice the 4 doesn't change that. Because if I plug in negative 2 here, it's 0. And 4 times 0 is still 0. So the 4 doesn't change that fact. And then I set this equal to 0. 5x minus 6 equals 0. Go ahead and solve that. Add 6 to both sides. Divide by 5. And you should get 6 fifths. As usual for this problem, the very first thing we want to do, set it equal to 0. Move everything to the same side. And since I do like to keep my x squared terms positive, I'm going to go ahead and move everything to the right side, which means I'm subtracting the 5x squared from both sides. So that will give me a 4x squared on the right side. And then I want to add the 8x to both sides, but notice that when I add 8x to both sides, they're both going to add to 0. So the x term is just going to go away. And then we subtract the 18 from both sides. You should have 0 equals 4x squared plus 72. That's now what you're solving. So finish solving it out from there. Which method do we want to use in this case? Square root principle, yeah. Or square root property, they both mean the same thing. And so that means I'm really wanting to go ahead and subtract that 72 from both sides. So I get negative 72 equals 4x squared. And I still want the squared part by itself 
So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And if I divide negative 72 by 4, I end up with negative 18 equals x squared. And then we take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of both sides, remember the plus or minus in front of the square root there. Okay? Very important to remember that plus or minus in there. In fact, I'm going to try to emphasize that a little bit more. I'll write it in in a different color here. But at this point, we're faced with a bit of a crossroads, aren't we? Because we now have the square root of a negative number. Now, if we were restricted to real solutions in this problem, we would have to say there were no real solutions. If we can give imaginary solutions, we need to continue, and we need to give the imaginary solutions. But it doesn't explicitly say which one we're supposed to do. Okay? Now, if you encounter that sort of situation and you're not sure, go ahead and ask on those. Because usually, I'll tell you, usually the answer is going to be go ahead and just stick with the real solutions. But for the time being, we're actually still dealing with those imaginary solutions, so we are going to go ahead and deal with this as an imaginary solution. And so as a result, I'm going to keep going with this. And so that plus or minus, it's still just going to carry down in front of this. And remember how I can simplify a negative square root, or the square root of a negative. Remember, I can just pull out that square root of negative 1 and just turn it into times the square root of 18. Because I know what the square root of negative 1 is. The square root of negative 1 is i. So it's going to be i root 18. And then I'm looking to see, okay, how do I now simplify the root 18? <coughs> and, of course, you could go ahead and take the 18 and make the factor tree of that sort of a thing. And if you do that, you'll find that we have a pair of 3's, which we can circle and take outside of the radical, and whatever's not circled stays inside, so you get 3 root 2. Or you could have said, oh, biggest perfect square that goes in 18 is 9, and then square root of 9 is 3. Either way, though, you end up with plus or minus i times 3 root 2. But Remember, we typically don't write it quite in this order. I do want to rearrange it just a little bit. Your final answer here is going to be plus or minus 3i root 2. And that's what we'd be looking for as our neatest final answer. Yes, we do like to write any numbers, then any letters, including i, and then our square roots just makes it a little bit clearer as we go and read it. And as always with these types of problems, the very first thing you want to do, set it equal to zero. And I do want to try to keep my x squared terms positive, so I'm going to choose to move everything to the left side in this particular case. When doing so, this is what you then should be looking at, and then this is what you're then trying to solve from there. Can we use square root property in this case? No, because we have both x squared and x. So try to factor it. If it's factorable, do so. If it's not, then you have to go to quadratic formula. So the first thing you do try is factoring. And so we figure out that a times c equals 6. So we're looking for two numbers that add to negative 4 and multiply to 6. There is no such thing. And so, since we cannot factor it, that means you're having to use quadratic formula from there. And so when you plug in a quadratic formula, this is what you should be looking at. Again, pay attention to where I'm writing those parentheses. I'm still seeing some of you run into sign errors. The reason why I put the parentheses in the way I do and all that stuff is remember that when especially doing this part of the quadratic formula over here, when I go and do that work, I'm just going to write this minus, and then I'm going to do the calculation of 4 times 3 times 2. I'm not trying to combine the minus in with that calculation, and I'm not multiplying by negative 4, I'm multiplying by a positive 4 in order to avoid any possible sign errors. All right, so when we work all the way through in our quadratic formula, we now have just 
that x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 over 6. Yes, we are going to deal with the imaginary solutions in this case, so we need to keep going. So I now need to simplify the square root of negative 8. So think about the fact that we have the negative inside. That tells us that we're going to have an i on the outside. The square root of negative 8, I see that it can be divided by 4. And so I'm going to do that really quickly. So it becomes root 4 times root 2. So that means it's going to be i times 2 root 2. So going back over here to my quadratic formula work, that means it's going to be 4 plus or minus 2i root 2 over 6. Again, I like to write the whole number first, then the i, and then the square root. All right, and then from there, we look at our fraction, and we look to see how can I reduce the fraction. And so then, in order to reduce that fraction, notice we can divide them all by 2, and so we do so. So, 4 divided by 2 gives me 2, plus or minus stays a plus or minus. 2i root 2 divided by 2 just leaves the i root 2. And then the 6, 6 divided by 2 gives me the 3. This is then our final answer, because there's no more simplifying we can do.